How dramatic police dash cam video of a trooper tapping the back of a vehicle to make the driver pull over. But the SUV ended up crashing and the woman behind the wheel was pregnant. She spoke exclusively with Jim Murray. Can you get out? Come on out. A pregnant mom is trapped upside down in a crashed car, all because of a controversial police maneuver. It should have been a routine stop for speeding. When the driver hears the sirens, she slows down and turns on her flashers. But the state trooper rams the car's rear bumper to make her stop. The car spins out of control across the highway, hits a wall and flips over. They rolled over, give me uh, EMS. The driver is expectant mom, Nicole Harper. Describe what was going through your mind. Were you literally flipping over? I'm pregnant with my first child um, that took 10 years to conceive. So of course it's devastating thinking I'm losing my baby. I'm literally hanging upside down by my seatbelt. Are you the only one in the vehicle? Yes. Okay. Pregnant. Well, ma'am, you've got to pull over when we stop. It doesn't matter, ma'am. The official Arkansas driver's license guide tells drivers being pulled over to activate your turn signal or emergency flashers to indicate that you are seeking a safe place to stop. I thought it would be safer to wait until the exit. No, ma'am, you should pull over when law enforcement stops you, okay? What officer had done that night was unequivocally deadly force. He used a vehicle going 60 miles an hour to ram into another vehicle. Bumping a fleeing car is called a pit maneuver or pursuit intervention technique. Pit maneuvers are used by police departments across America, but at least 30 people have died and hundreds more injured in pit maneuvers since 2016. Retired NYPD Lieutenant Darren Porcher. You can't control the directional flight of the vehicle that's being struck. Here in New York City, for example, the NYPD prohibits pit maneuvers for that same reason. Arkansas state troopers said in a statement, Pitt has saved lives among those who choose to obey the law against those who choose to run from police. Fortunately, Nicole's baby, born in February, is fine. We call it a pit maneuver when people flee from us or don't, or don't stop from us. The fact that this cop just casually walks over to her car, which is flipped over, and he still had the audacity to lecture her about not pulling over, which is completely asinine. Now keep this in the back of your mind. She wasn't just pregnant. She was pregnant for the first time in 10 years of trying to conceive. I cannot imagine how scared this woman was. This cop ought to be a damn shamed of himself. We need less men like him and more men like Ben Shapiro. Now, can we play the Ben Shapiro montage, please? Political column in Rolling Stone magazine is suggesting America's millennial generation should push for, quote, a fair society. And this is a quote, as much as unemployment blows, so do jobs. What if people didn't have to work to survive? Is this a joke? Uh, no, I mean, it isn't. This is actually how a lot of millennials think, and this is how the Occupy Wall Street movement thinks. This is a group of people who graduated with de degrees in lesbian dance theory and then were surprised when they didn't get a six-figure paycheck out of college. So in the very rare case where <coughs> a leftist uses evidence, logic, and empiricism, mm -hmm. um, how do I combat like statistics they propose? Who is it and when has it happened ever? I agree with you that like biologically a man is a man and a woman is a woman. I was just wondering what you see the detriment of society, like why we can't like let a transgender like woman be called she or something. Because just, it is a lie. Because it is a lie. The fact is that workers everywhere in the nation need a higher minimum wage and workers everywhere are inspired by what's happened so far in Seattle, and all eyes are in Seattle, are on Seattle. Workers everywhere are feeling empowered by how much workers in Seattle are fighting for their rights. So it has nothing to do with Seattle zip code. We need this to happen everywhere, but what's wrong with starting with Seattle? It's true, you might say that workers of the world, for lack of a better word, are unite, are uniting. Um, you know, as, 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 far as, as far as the... Uh, as it's easy to make facetious comments. It's, easy to, it's very hard to dispute data. Well, since you provided no data in that actual answer, it's not that difficult. Since you provided no data in that actual answer, it's not that difficult. One thing that I absolutely love about Ben Shapiro is that he does not interrupt people. He lets them say what they want to say, and he dismantles them and puts them in their place. Legends have say 
that Ben Shapiro is the only man that wins arguments with his wife. In your video where you debunk white privilege, you talk about how white privilege is a made up term by privileged minorities. So I was wondering if you can elaborate on some of the privileges that you think minority groups have. Okay, so for in privileges in law, so when I, when I say privilege, I'm actually gonna talk about legal standing. Okay, so affirmative action is a privilege. Affirmative action is a privilege. Subprime mortgages designed to appeal to minority loan, to minority recipients without proper qualifications, that is a privilege. Right? Those are a couple examples of, of privilege. Privilege would also be the, the police being told that they can't police in communities the same way they would in other communities because they don't understand the problems of minority communities. That's a privilege. It's, and by the way, these privileges are not helpful, but these are but as an overall matter, but they are, it is certainly a pro, it's very difficult for me to see how it's not a privilege to get a lower score on the SAT than the Asian guy who's living in exactly the same circumstance. He gets penalized 50 points, you get 230 points on the SATs. That is definitionally a privilege. So there's one. Do you disagree? Yeah, but I don't want to take okay. up this time, so I'm just going to let. Today we're going to go through a lot of the terms that these folks use. And these are terms that I'm sure you've heard because you're on campus, and for people who are watching online, you may have not have heard these because you exist in the real world, where mommy and daddy don't pay the bills, and you're not paid to believe in the power of your dreams, and no one cares about your feelings. So, here are the terms that we're going to go through and talk about today. We're going to talk about diversity, we're going to talk about white privilege, we're going to talk about trigger warnings, we're going to talk about microaggressions, and we're going to talk about safe spaces. So the Hall of Fame of Stupidity. <laughs> now, this exercise may in fact trigger some people, so consider this your trigger warning. I don't care how you feel. And if your feelings are hurt, I'm not sorry in any way. No. <laughs> The reason I say no, I'd be happy to let people win if they're not screaming, and the reason I say no is because it's a fire hazard, and the last time people tried to create a fire hazard, they pulled the fire alarm in the middle of the lecture. Don't give them ideas. And <laughs> I know, they don't have many of their own. Is it just me, or does Ben Shapiro look like he'll make one hell of a history teacher? How do you say that some people don't have privilege when you basically just said that trans people aren't valid, they're not a thing, they're just girls pretending to be boys or boys pretending to be girls? Mm, okay, the idea that that sex or gender are malleable is not true. Okay, and I'm not denying your humanity if you are a transgender person. I am saying that you are not the sex to which you claim to be. You're still a human being, and you're a human being with an issue that I'm. You know, I wish you Godspeed in in dealing with in whatever way you see fit. But if you are going to dictate to me that I'm supposed to pretend, I'm supposed to pretend that men are women and women are men, no. My answer is no. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to modify basic biology because it threatens your subjective sense of what you are. Uh, millennials are more likely to be lean Democrat or now socialism is on the rise. How do we convey conservatism to them and uh, show them the light? What people on the, the left tend to hear from, from people on the left about politics is socialism is moral. It's the right thing to do. You're rich, that guy's poor. Wouldn't it be more moral if you were both not quite as, as Polarized on the spectrum. You know, if you have $10, does it really hurt you to give up two to that guy who has $3? Aren't you both better off now? And the answer is, just because I exist doesn't mean I get to steal your money. We have to determine how that money got in your pocket in the first place. There's something deeply immoral to suggesting, to, to suggesting that I am owed something by you simply because I'm here and we're in the same room. Okay, that's not true. I don't know how you got your money. Maybe you worked your way up from poverty. Maybe you made a lot of money because you invented some new GMO that allowed billions of people to be fed. Right? In that case, you deserve the money. And guess what? You deserve the money in a free market economy because people were willing to engage in a voluntary transaction with you. Voluntary transactions, consent. This is the nature of capitalism. Seizure of property, seizure of wealth, force, compulsion. These are the nature of socialism. White family worth in terms of uh, financial worth, is 69 times more than that of black families. Given this disparity, how can you argue that racism is not a driving factor in income inequality? Because it has nothing to do with race and everything to do with culture. And when you have a culture that doesn't... And when... And when it, you know what? Explain to me. You explain to me why black kids aren't graduating high school. Explain that one to me. Explain to me why black kids are shooting each other in rates significantly higher than whites are shooting each other. Explain to me why 13% of the population is responsible for 50% of the murder. Explain to me why the, why the number of blacks and black kids 
in prison, not for innocent reasons, not for walking down the street and getting pulled into a prison, is so high. Explain, if it has nothing to do with culture, explain to me why the single motherhood rate in the black community jumped from 20% to 70% in the same course of time that the civil rights movement has made such tremendous strides. Is America more racist now than it was in 1960? And if it is, please explain to me how that happened. Can you guys just imagine the two-year-old Ben Shapiro arguing over why he should have a cookie? This man is an absolute genius. So the wage gap between men and women, uh, what would your opinion on this? I mean, it's not my opinion. It's statistical fact. This is bullshit. <laughs> okay, the, 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 <clears throat> the, the 78 cents on the dollar myth is just that. It's a myth. Time magazine actually found as early as 2010 that in the 50 biggest cities in the United States, women were actually earning more than men. If they had the same job qualifications, the same number of years in the workforce, the same number of hours worked, the reason that women on average are paid less is because women take time off, they take less risky jobs, they don't take as much time at work, they would rather be home with their families, these are choices that women make, and it's astonishing to me that feminists actually degrade those choices as though it's a terrible thing when a woman takes time off. Well, it's, it's her choice, I mean, I thought that was your whole deal. I think that uh, if you are looking at your own lives, what you would like for your own families, for all your loved ones, what is it that you look for? You look for a decent standard of living. You look for good schools for your children, decent, good quality food, nutritious food, a safe neighborhood, uh, decent uh, housing to live in. You're looking for all these things. So are all those 100,000 workers who need something close to a living wage. And I really agree, you know, $15 an hour is not enough, but it is really disingenuous Time. to say that it's not enough and then not fight for something like 15 or even more. Ben? Uh, people, people want a lot of things, you know, housing, health, you know, to live forever, a pony. I mean, there, there are a lot of things that we all want out of life. <laughs> The reality is that there is no pony tree, which makes it difficult. So when, when, it comes to the, when it comes to the morality of this, bottom line to me is, is it, it is not vicious, cruel, or immoral for me to make you an offer that you consensually accept. In fact, it is vicious, cruel, and immoral for someone who's a third party to, to get involved or for you to leverage a gun to get in the middle of that consensual relationship. Time. Ben Shapiro arguments is right in so many ways, but some people are just so stupid overall that they cannot comprehend and grasp the concepts of what he is trying to say. Ben Shapiro's intelligence is on a whole nother level. You know, my perspective on transgenderism is, is very clear and, it's, and I've been very clear about it for a very long time. I believe in this thing called biology. I believe in this thing called chromosomal biology. I don't believe there's a magic machine that makes men into women or women into men. I think that if you have the biology of a man, you are indeed a man, and what you think in your head does not make it so. If you think you're Napoleon Bonaparte, you're not, and if you think that you're a woman when you're a man, you are still a man who thinks he's a woman. And I think it is actually cruelty, I think it's cruelty to people who suffer from gender dysphoria to suggest that the mental illness that is gender dysphoria can be cured by cutting up your body. That is not the problem. And the proof that it's not the problem is that after people cut up their bodies, their suicide rate is precisely the same as it was before they had the surgery. So passing this off as oh, the only reason the suicide rate is 40% is because people are mean to transgenders. That's a bunch of crap. The reason that the suicide rate is 40% is because there is a high comorbidity between depression and suicidality and gender dysphoria. I've been binge watching a lot of Ben Shapiro's content. And I must say, he's probably one of the brightest minds that we have today. And I can see why a lot of people hate him because he just simply tells the truth. Ben Shapiro is probably one of the brightest minds along with Jordan Peterson. Mr. Kevin Samuels, RIP the legend, Andrew Tate. Now, gentlemen, on that note, that's it for today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Where are you? Oh, what's up?